Tubers, two bits, crazy people. What would happen if you woke up one day and you could no longer move from the neck down? That's exactly what happened to my good friend Julian. And we've been tracking his progress. I think it's only fair, since we brought you the bad news, that we take some time right now and bring you some good news. Here's Julian. Okay, well, I'm back with Matthew McConaughey, and, <laughs> <laughs> and this is my friend Jules, and Jules has been through quite the ordeal. We did a video about this about two months ago, where you were paralyzed and in the hospital. Yeah. Uh, for those that aren't familiar with it, or even those that are, maybe you can give us a little refresher as to what happened to you. Yeah, well, it was um, just one morning I woke up and all of a sudden my legs started giving out on me. And uh, so by the end of the day, I couldn't walk. And then uh, in the next 72 hours, I was fully paralyzed. I couldn't even move my fingers, turn over or anything. So I was in bewilderment pretty much because I didn't have a diagnosis. So over the course of the next few weeks, we actually went and had two different doctors look at me one at ACE and one at Polymedic, and they came up with the same diagnosis. It's called GBS, which is a paralyzing condition, and it comes sometimes from bacteria. Could have been food, water, but actually your uh, red blood cells turn on your nervous system. Uh, some people, it actually takes six months to a year, but we've actually been able to roll back around in three months. So three months ago is when this first happened. Yeah. And then how long was it? You waited around like two or three weeks hoping it would go away, right? Yeah, we waited five weeks. Five weeks, sorry. Yeah. So for a month and a week, you were just laying in bed. Yeah. And yeah. didn't you have like some healers and stuff come over? Yeah, we had healers come from other islands as far as Mindanao. One stayed with us five days and he was doing his bag of herbal medicines and stuff, which didn't really seem to help. And so I was concerned more about my, my muscle tone. I was losing all my muscle tone and blood clotting and, and not having any physical therapy. So that's when me and Paul uh, got together and Paul suggested that I go to ACE and we were just gonna sign up for physical therapy, but they went ahead and put me in and diagnosed me with the condition and actually started treatment. That was quite an exercise down at ACE. Yes. Because we had two or three people just trying to send us away. Yeah. And they kept saying, well, the doctor's not in, this, that, the other. Yeah. And it was you, me, and Sean. Shout out to Sean, because he was instrumental in this also. Yep. And we actually had put, or he had put himself in the back of his truck. So we went down the road like the Beverly Hillbillies <laughs> on the way to Ace Hospital. Redneck riders. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so after about an hour or so of dilly dally and around in the hospital, uh, we came up with a idea of going to the emergency room yeah and went in there and all of the doctors that weren't there suddenly appeared yeah because we just simply asked another person yeah we asked somebody down in the basement where physical therapy was oh no there's nobody here that can talk to you went upstairs actually went up to the help desk i went up to the help desk and said do you have a doctor that put his hands on this man no they're all with patients or they're busy or they're gone or they're there so they're that and we just decided not to give up on, on the, the search. Yeah. And so we went back around, we drove up through emergency room, checked in there, and the guy, the kid, the orderly said, well, do you want a uh, physical therapist or do you want a, what was it? Neurologist. Neurologist. Yeah. And I said, I think we'll take a neurologist. <laughs> yeah. And the neurologist wasn't at lunch, wasn't with patients, wasn't gone. She was there all the whole time and ended up diagnosing you with the disease. Yep, yep, exact same symptoms. Ooh. And uh, she prescribed, it was five days of uh, IV treatment that actually had to come from Bacolod. So we would have to get a, a few bottles at a time. And they did this intravenous uh, application. And by day five, I was thinking, man, this just ain't working, ain't nothing happening. But Right after I finished the fifth day, uh, actually my fingers started moving a little. And then it progressively, every day since then, it would get a little better. And I mean, my wife was with me the whole time. There were some nights to where we got absolutely zero sleep because she would have to turn me over or I would have so much pain involved. 
and then I started going to an osteopath, which actually helps with your circulation. Uh, she is, her name is Ellen. She's actually in Dowin. I highly recommend her if you have any, any problems. And then we have a pool at a, a house that we're selling, in fact, the one right behind us. And so I started hydrotherapy and I could stand up in the pool. So I felt like I was vertical again. So hope started springing up. And then where were you at a point where you could get into a wheelchair? Um, I could get into a wheelchair probably, I think, a week and a half. You after had enough I, upper body strength to, yes. to do it or no? Yes. I, I, as long as I had it right beside the bed or whatever, I could take one arm and kind of slide over into it. And it took probably after treatment maybe an additional three, three and a half weeks before I could actually lift myself up by myself even going to the CR the bathroom or whatever my wife would have to help me and all and I actually got to the point where I could hold on to a few things or whatever and go down and come back up so that was a relief now here it is three months I actually stood up and took a shower this morning so we'll insert in this him walking yeah. um, no shower scene there <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> Let's walk back a little bit. What goes through a man's mind when one day you're back here at your house that you're building? Yeah. And you're working with your crew and you're swinging a hammer when you need to and you're doing all that. And then 24 hours or 48 hours later, you are paralyzed. What goes through a man's mind? And you don't know why. The, the feeling of helplessness Whereas, um, you know, you were so active and useful before and then all of a sudden you have no use at all, which is always a fear of mine as I get older that I won't be of much use. But then if, to have it done instantly like that, I thought about everything. I thought about my kids. I thought about my wife. I thought about the mechanic work that had to go uh, cutting grass around the yards. You know, everything that usually a, a husband or father does uh, you know, to keep things well maintained or whatever, you know, I just out the door, I'm like, what am I going to do now? So it's actually Richie's family came in, her brothers and all came in and were of great assistance, even with the language barrier. But yeah, it's just a feeling of almost hopelessness. And, you know, number one, is this going to end? Isn't it scary, though? It scared I mean, the hell it out of me. scared the shit out of me. Yeah, Pardon yeah. my French. It scared the but hell if, out of me. If, if on Friday I'm, I'm moving and grooving and Sunday I can't move, I don't know. I don't know what I would think. I mean, it's almost unfathomable to me. Yeah. And did you get depressed? Did you get scared? Oh yeah, I, I would get depressed. There were times I'd actually cry, you know, and I'd have to go all the way down. That's kind of the way I am. Get it out of my system. The next morning, I wake up and start fighting again. I mean, we were at the point of. If it wasn't going to get better, what were we going to do? Would you yeah. fly to Manila? You know, you'd have to have assistance getting in and out of taxis. And I'm not the smallest guy in the world, so Filipinos wouldn't be able to do it. My wife couldn't do it. So, you know, it's like almost like being in a war. You instantly have to come up with a plan. And I was thinking, okay, let's fly to Manila, get to the airport, call the ambulance. Let them transport me to the to the airport. So it's all these different things. So even thinking about me working up to physical therapy and standing, I'm thinking, how in the world am I going to stand? So my mind starts clicking. I'm like, okay, I'll get a rope. I'll get a come along, and I'll get an inner tube off of a multicab, wrap it around me, and I'll crank myself up. Right. You know. So it's number one. It's no giving up. You know. Okay. It's no giving up. And then to have my kids, who are all teenagers, watch me. You know, the guy who was always the fighter and, and uh, provider and everything else, all of a sudden he's down. And they withdrew. They I did. I noticed that. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, God love them. But yeah. they, they, were, they didn't know what to do. Yeah. And they, were, they withdrew. Yeah, kind of like emotionally preparing their sales, protecting their sales yeah. in a way. Yeah. And, and I, you know, and this experience has been so good for them as well because they see that no matter how bad it can get, you can generally overcome it or adapt to it. Right. You know, I mean, I thought there for a point, what if I'm in a wheelchair full time, you know? So you got to start rethinking, what am I going to do? I see other people. I mean, I see people on the street here that don't have any legs yeah. and they use slippers for their hands and they're smiling. 
So I'm like, okay, if this guy can do it, yeah, you know, he's got something in him that we all have in us, you know. So I, well I may have to prepare for that. But yes, the the biggest thing and being over here, you know, it's like with your wife too. She's small like my wife. Sure. If you get in a situation like that, you almost have to hire somebody. Right. If you can afford it, if you can't, you have right. to adapt. Right. You know. So looking, it looks to now. We'll again, we'll show the clip of your walking here okay. somewhere. Um, so you're walking, you're walking with a cane. Yep. And what do you figure? A couple, three months more and you'll be back to you know, um, strutting your stuff? I, I'm hoping a uh, month. TikTok videos. Yeah, a month to six <laughs> weeks is what I'm hoping for. A month to six weeks. Yeah. You think but, you'll be back to having a normal stride? Yeah. No yeah. cane, all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, because now, like I say, I'm on a treadmill. I'm trying to walk 1,000 to 1,500 steps a day, so every day I'm building on that, which is great because I have access to these things at our house. I have the water therapy. Swimming is one of the best exercises because you actually use all the muscles in your body. Mm -hmm. You know, so... But the biggest thing still now, it's like the other day I went swimming and a wave knocked me down and I didn't have a cane or nothing. So trying to stand up was almost impossible because I still have to start doing squats, which strengthens your legs, your buttocks, every, all these muscles that help you stand up, go upstairs, which I can go upstairs now. So that's progressing. So it's little by little, you know, I mean, every day that I see something else, I'm like, man, I got to do this today. Now I can drive. Watch <laughs> out. Yeah. You're driving now. Yeah. Back driving, uh, awesome. going to the beach, swimming, you know, I can actually carry a few things around. I actually got to, uh, you know, changing the oil and stuff in the uh, long mowers and everything else. So yeah, it's, it, it's coming back up and you get a whole new lease on life, you know, and you think, well, what did I do to deserve this for it to be so bad? But then in the same token, you turn around and say, what did I deserve? Uh, what do I deserve me getting better? You know, so something, somebody was watching out for me for sure. I mean, you know, we're, we're kind of religious in our own sure. beliefs, in our own heart, sure, my religion. Absolutely. Yeah. In, in my mind. And also, yeah, the, the blessings, you know, that we, we have had of coming back. You know, it, it's one of the best things in the world. This might be a big turning point in your life in the future in that, you know, you've gone through, you've walked through this fire. Yeah. And I've always said that when people walk through fire and they survive it, it's like it's like uh, refining metals. It burns off the impurities. Yeah. You know, and I think coming out of this, you come off cleaner and stronger and probably with more clarity. Yes. More empathy. Yes. Well, you know, when you look at people that are disadvantaged, people that are in wheelchairs, you've got to view them differently. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, yeah. and you're the fortunate one. I mean, you had a three month set, setback. Yeah. And then it's going to be another month or two and you'll be back to moving and grooving. So you're totally blessed in that regard. Yeah. Yeah. And what do you th I think you'll be able to use this. I don't know. Uh, somewhere in the future. I think that's why these things happen to us. Exactly. I mean, I'll, I've actually kind of changed my mindset to uh, even on some of my videos, trying to start doing more motivational uh, talks with people and stuff, because yes, you do take it for granted. You walk some by somebody with a, in a wheelchair and you don't think anything about it, but the struggles that they go through daily, mm. we have no clue. I mean, to be healthy, to have our, both of our eyes, you know, my father always said, he said, the most valuable thing you can have in life is your health. You know, that. so the two things in life that are most valuable to me is time and my health. And I want to spend as much time with my family as I can and enjoy this great place here in the Philippines. Because I came over here, I was like the, the bull out of the gate you know, a year and a half ago, you know, just charging through. And now once you get to set back and, and reevaluate things and you settle in more, you know, now, now I'm, I'm a lot nicer to people. I'll stop and speak. And, you know, whereas before I didn't have the time. Right. But now I, you know, I do, I, I recognize that as the important things in life. You know. you know what I found is when I'm down and I've had my moments where I've been down, not as bad as that, yeah. but in other situations, and that was a time where I found out who my real friends were. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, we've had uh, Sean and Paul and, and people that have come by, um, Dave and Ann, they have been b beside us the whole time. They brought us baked goods anywhere we needed to go. You know, they were there for us. And, and you know, that is, that's priceless. 
you know, we, we can never repay people like that, you know, but in the end, it's friends and family anyway, you know, that are most important to you. It ain't money, you know, it ain't crossing the finish line, you know, to win or whatever. It's looking past the finish line. So the adventure continues. You know, you don't stop at the finish line. It continues right on. Right. You know, and you, you can share that with others and enrich other people's lives as much as possible. One other thing, and I asked you this earlier, I, I, I hope you don't mind sharing it here. If you do, you do. Yeah. But people are going to be curious, how much did you spend for that whole treatment here in the Philippines? Treatment, physical therapy, osteopaths, everything roughly around $15,000. So you can, at home watching this, if you want, maybe you'd like to Google or check it out, or maybe you've had an experience with it yourself, what the price would have been somewhere else. Because yeah. here, that's a pretty good bargain. It is. You know, to go from paralyzed to back to vertical, 15 grand, I think most people would pay 10 times that. It is, it or is. 100 times that if they yeah. had it. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and, and back to the point that we had stressed before, when you come over here, you better have that backup bank, you know, 20, 25,000, you know, unless you're taking a 50-50 chance, because if you're here and you're alone and you go down like I was down, mm -hmm. chances are you may even die. You know, if you can't get to the, you can't feed yourself, you can't cook, you can't pick up your phone yep. and order grab or nothing. Right. Y you know, so you have to think of these things, you know, as we get older, of course, we always seem to have a backup plan more, me being a father. I always try and have a couple backup plans, but just winging it in another country or, or anywhere, even in your own country, if you're alone, you know, you should have at least some type of a backup plan, but especially here. Especially you know, here. Yes. And let's do this because you're doing a little bit of motivational speaking, you're, you're, you're tracking and you're filming your progress. Yep. Let's plug your channel. What's the name of your channel? Uh, it is Jules in the Philippines, and it's spelled differently. It's J-U-E-L-L-S, named after my grandmother. Okay, so we'll put a link to that in this video. And the house that Jules just built and has up for sale is behind us. And it is a beautiful, brand new, three-bedroom, two-bath house. Yep. Swimming pool, yep. the whole enchilada. Yep. And if you're interested in that, go ahead and hit him up. So, Jules, thanks again for coming on the channel. It's awesome to see you vertical this time. Yes, sir. And one thing he's never lost is that smile. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, we'll see you in the next video, guys.